Good morning, brothers and sisters. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, even pandemic. Today, we are gathered to celebrate the baccalaureate mass for our graduates of our beloved Centro Escolar University, Makati. In this Eucharistic celebration, we glorify and thank God for the countless blessings He had bestowed upon us, especially for the gift of life and for the great opportunity of having a good education. Now, as we end our tertiary studies and are being equipped with the required knowledge, wisdom, and positive value orientation, we come to this joyful celebration of encounter with the Lord to thank Him for the many blessings that He showered upon us, showing us that He is indeed the God of mercy, the Father to all His children. Likewise, let us also ask the grace to live up to our Founder's philosophy of science and virtue that we have earned from our beloved alma mater, Centro Escolar University. At this Eucharistic celebration, as one community, let us entrust our well-being and future to God, that He may lead us to the right career, profession, vocation, and track. Let us also remember the special intentions of those involved in making this journey a fruitful one. The parents, the CEU administration, professors and faculty, our friends and sponsors, and those here present today and virtually, may the Lord sustain and bless them for their generosity and undertakings. Family of God, let us all rise and join in singing the entrance hymn as we welcome our Mass Presider, Father Brian Paul L. Tayag, SSP. our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather today, let our hearts be filled with joy and thanksgiving to the loving God who is always with us in our journey and undertakings. He is always with us. He will never abandon nor leave us alone. He is ever faithful. However, let us also remember and be sorry for our shortcomings to Him and to one another. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me the, to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who always listen mercifully to your servants in distress, we humbly beseech you as we give thanks for your kindness that free from all evil, we may constantly serve you in gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. The first reading will be proclaimed by Mark Emerson Baksain. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods beside me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousand generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave punished him who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, your God. No work may be done either by you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with you. In six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, 
the sea, and all that is in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of a purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Hear the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. An evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty, sixty or thirtyfold. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Una sa lahat, isang mainit na pagbati sa lahat ng mga magtatapos ngayong taon. Pati na din sa pamunuan ng pamantasan ng CEU Makati, administrador at mga guro sa mga magulang na at mga kamag-anak, kaibigan at sa iba pang mga taong naging kabahagi ng buhay ng ating mga graduating students. Isa sa mga kilalang kasabihan sa Pilipino ay ito. Kung ano ang itinanim, siya rin ang aanihin. Tama nga naman, kung nagtanim ka ng buto ng mangga, asahan mong mangga rin ang magiging bunga. 
hindi ka makakapag-ani ng bunga ng apple kung ang itanim mo ay star apple. Hindi ba? Kung ano ang itinanim, siya rin ang aanihin. Kung ito ang pakahulugan natin sa naturang kasabihan, pwedeng sabihin natin mababaw lamang ito. Trivial, kumbaga. Kaya nga natawa kayo kanina. Hindi siya skin deep. Hindi natin marurok ang iba pang mga bagay-bagay. Pwede nating baguhin ng kaunti ang kasabihang ito, ang linyang aking nabanggit sa ganitong kataga. Kung saan ka nagtanim, nakadepende ang aanihin mo. Kung saan ka, naka, na, kung saan ka nagtanim, nakatib, nakadepende ang aanihin mo. Ito sa aking palagay ang buod ng ebanghelyong ating napakinggang ngayong araw, my dear brothers and sisters. Kung saan ka nagtanim, nakadepende ang aanihin. The gospel is about the parable of the sower. But what is interesting is that the story does directly or explicitly describe the sower. Ang sentro ng kwento ay ang buto, yung butil, yung seed, hindi yung nagtanim ng buto. Gayun pa man, masasabi pa din natin na mahalaga ang ginagampanan ng sower sa kwento. Nakasalalay sa sower ang kaganapan o ang kabuluhan ng buto. There are four places, my dear brothers and sisters, where the seed may be sown by the sower. On a path o ang daraanan, rocky ground, yung mabato, to yung lupa, among the thorns, and rich soil. Obviously, my dear brothers and sisters, graduating students, Christ favors the rich soil as the best place where the seed can grow and bear good fruits. Seed sown on the path apparently will not grow because they will be trampled upon by those who are walking on the path. Mamamatay din sila. At sa pagkamatay nila, hindi sila makakapamuhay. When the seed is sown on a rocky ground, it will hardly grow, hindi ba? Kasi nga, tuyo ang lupa at mabato, hindi kakapit ang kanilang ugat. It may grow, but not too long. The seed planted among thorns may grow, but bears no fruit. That is why the best place where to sow seeds is on the rich soil. Kahit magtanong pa kayo sa mga magsasaka. Katulad ng palay, hindi ba? Napakaraming proseso para makapagtanim ka ng palay at makaani ka ng marami. Hindi basta-basta ang proseso ng pagtatanim ng palay. Kailangan yung lupa, tama. Kailangan yung tubig, tama. At kailangan din inaalagaan ang palay. Tinatanggalan ng mga snails, tinatanggalan ng mga weeds upang maging malusog ang palay. Maaari nating ihambing ang inyong mga buhay bilang estudyante sa kwentong ito, my dear brothers and sisters, graduating students. Sa apat o higit pang taon ng pag-aaral, ibang, iba't ibang mga bagay ang inyong napagdaanan sa buhay. Hindi madali ang lahat. Sa bawat taon na ginugugol ninyo sa pag-aaral, kayo ay naitapon sa iba't ibang uri ng lugar ng karanasan. Mahirap man ito, masilimuot man ito at komplikado. 
Dahil dito, may pagkakataon na gusto ninyo ng sumuko, hindi ba? Lalong-lalo na sa pagpanahon ng exams, paggawa ng mga papers. Susuko ka na kasi hindi mo na alam ang gagawin mo. Drain na drain ka na dahil sa sobrang daming binabasa. Right? Pagod ka na. Pero bakit kailangan, bakit meron pa rin uh, strength, galak na magpatuloy? Bakit sa kabila ng komplikadong buhay ng isudyante, kahit sa kabila ng kapaguran ninyo, pilit nyo pa rin tinatapos? There is something in it, right? Dahil dito, may pagkakataon talagang susuko ang isang estudyante. Siguro, siguro dahil hindi nyo makita ang sarili ninyo na magkakabunga. Na mamumunga ng maganda at mabuti. Kasi tinitingnan lang natin yung present. Yung present na nag -e exam ka. Yung present na panahon na gumagawa ka ng mga papers, yun lang ang nakikita natin noon tayo nakatoon. Pero hindi natin nakikita yung malawakan, yung futuristic view na lahat ng ginagawa kong ito ay para sa buhay ko, para sa buhay ng pamilya ko, para sa buhay ng komunidad ko. There is fruit in the things that you do as a student, whether it is hard for you But the fruit that you labor, the, the, the labor that you do or put in you being a student is far greater than the hardship that you experience now. Pero ito, kayo ngayon, sa kabila ng mga ito, Nagbunga ng maganda ang lahat ng inyong paghihirap. Kayo ay isinaboy sa lupang hitik sa vitamina. Pero tandaan natin na hindi garantiya ang matabang lupa para sa magandang bunga. Kailangan din ng tubig, araw, hangin at pag-aalaga para sa ganun ang puno ay mamunga ng masagana. This celebration is a testament that indeed you bear good fruit. The fruit of your blood, sweat, and tears. You were just a seed for or more years. But now look at yourself. You are now a grown up, a graduating student, matured enough because you have experienced many things in life. Thanks to those who help you grow, to those who took good care of you, and to those who keep on supporting you all throughout the years of your academic life. Of course, not to forget your alma mater, who keeps on enriching her ground with quality learning and education. Sabi ko nga, kung saan ka nagtanim, nakadepende ang inyong aanihin. Walang duda, kayo ay aani ng madami dahil sa lupang pinagtaniman ninyo ng panahon, oras, lakas at talento, galing. At iba pa ay isang matabang lupa. The CEU, Central Escolar University, can be considered a rich soil for you to grow, for you to harvest manifold fruit, 160 or 30-fold. Is, hindi ba tama naman? The CEU, your alma mater, is a good soil. She has been teaching you a lot. Science and virtue, knowledge and character, how to be a good member of the community, how to be a good person. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, ang pagtatapos ninyo ay hindi lamang para sa inyo. 
ang pagtatapos ninyo ay para sa pamilya nyo, para sa komunidad, para sa bansa, para sa buong sangkatauhan. Do not be selfish. Tandaan ninyo yan. Na ang pagtatapos ninyo ay bunga na maibabahagi ninyo para sa sangkatauhan. At ang panghuli, isa pang mahalagang aral ng kwento ay ito. Ang pagtanim ay isang pagpili. It is a choice. Nakasalalay sa sower ang pagpili ng lugar na pagtataniman ng binhi. Ang lugar ay nariyan lamang, pero ang pagpipili o ang choice ay nakapagpapabago. Piliin ang mabuti. Pumili ng mabuti para sa ganon mabunga din, magbunga din ng mabuti. Let us remember, sisters and brothers, in Christ, ang lahat ng ito ay regalo mula sa bukal na biyaya na nanggagaling sa Diyos. Kung ang puno ay hitik sa bunga, it is because the sower planted it on a rich soil, took good care of it, watching it many full times to make sure it will bear good fruits enough for the birds to eat and for our human delight. Just like it, we are gifted to give. We are created out of love, out of God's unconditional love. Love is giving. Love is sharing. Our life is a gift ought to be shared to others. Your success in whatever kind is not only your success, but also success of others, especially your family, your parents, your professors, your friends, and community members. And most importantly, it is the success of the whole world because you are now treading a path that will benefit the humanity. Let us always remind ourselves that as God's creation, we are gifted to give. The question is, what to give? This is the theme. Empowered as Scholarian, gifted to give. The question is simple. What to give? Kung tatanungin kayo, graduating students, what to give to your family, to your community, to the whole world? You may give your talent. You may give the education that you received from Centro Escolar University. You may give your time so that others may have also companion. You may give your presence. Just by mere of your presence, you are helping those in need, especially the least, the last, and the loss of our society. You may give the education that you earned in this institution to educate others. There are a lot to give, but this is a simple one. What to give is love. Just as Christ has given us love for so many times, every now and then in our life, He has given us love. Out of love, we are created. Out of love, we are forgiven. And out of love, we ought to give that love also to other person. This is will summarize everything. If you love your neighbor, just as you love yourself, hindi ba mas yung maganda at mabuti ang ibibigay mo sa kapwa mo? Kung talagang mahal mo ang kapatid mo, yung tutulungan mo siya sa anumang paraan na makakaya mo. 
Love is unconditional. No ifs, no buts. Just pure love. No question. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, graduating students, when you love, do not ask for anything in return. Just give that love. Yes, you may receive some honorarium or stipend, but do not ask for more. You may, have, you may receive gifts, but do not ask. Kung ibibigay iyong palad, huwag mo nang ihingin ang buong kamay. Be contented in what the world or brothers and sisters is giving you. Madalas kasi, kaya napapasama tayo sa buhay, we are not content of what we have. Gusto natin kabig ng kabig. In love, we have to learn to be content in life. Sapat na. Kung ano ang meron sa table, yun na yun. Do not ask for more. Just like the Father who keeps on loving us despite our frailties, wickedness, and in all our little ways, we strive to do the same. As you continue to tread the path of success, may you always remember to sow seeds and be seed full of love and goodness. As a sower, you are now the sower. Kayo na ang magsasaka. You have for a time become the seed, but now you are now the sower of good seed. Make your seed planted in a ground that will give hope, love, joy, and kindness to others. My dear graduating students, I will say this. At the end of our day, God will say, Well done, my good and faithful stewards. Come, share your master's joy. I repeat, at the end of our life, at the end of each day, God will say, Well done, my good and faithful steward. Share your master's joy. Again, congratulations to all. Please rise. We pray to the Father in heaven that people may listen to his mighty word so that it may bear fruit among us. Our response, Lord, let your word grow in us. Lord, let your word grow in us. The prayers of the faithful will be led by Geraldine A. Jimenez. That the church, the people of God, may be open to God's word and convey it in a language that people can understand. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let your word grow in us. That those in public office may render their service with honesty and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let your, let your word grow in us. That the sick, the handicapped, the elderly, the abandoned, the depressed, victims of COVID-19 may find healing and comfort from the words of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let your word grow in us. That the faithful departed, having died with Christ, may share in his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let your word grow in us. That all of us graduates mirror the love of Jesus by active participation and faithfulness in the mission of the church through the career paths we will soon embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let your word grow in us. That our dear alma mater, Central Scholar University Makati, our administrators, faculty and staff, continue to inspire the young to value the essentials in life and become models of virtues for others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let your word grow in us. That our dear parents and families, 
may they be blessed by the Lord for their generosity in supporting us materially and spiritually in achieving our paramount dream, a good future. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let your word grow in us. Lord God, speak your word to us and make us listen to it. May it bear the fruit of Christ, Christian living in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church O Lord who gave us your son to rescue us graciously from death and from every evil accept we pray in mercy this sacrifice which we offer you in thanksgiving for our deliverance from distress through Christ our Lord Amen. the Lord be with you Amen. lift up your hearts Amen. let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is truly right and just to give you thanks, to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding from all eternity, dwelling in an approachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so, in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim.
Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to pre prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come, for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, Taking the chalice filled the fruit of the vine. He gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. As we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, 
Jose, our bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who partake in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose fate you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Gathered as one family of God, let us now pray the prayer Jesus himself taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you.
Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through this bread of life are pleased to free your servants from the bond of sin and in your compassion to restore their strength, grant us to advance without hindrance towards the hope of glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer against COVID-19, the Oratio Imperata. Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. 
We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick and competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and, ab and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask now for your almighty hand to be upon our candidates as they and their families celebrate this grand, grand milestone. May they find comfort from our community's continued embrace and support as they journey through life. May they find strength in the excellence of their academic preparation imbued with the university's twin philosophy of science and virtue. Bless their lives from this day on with goodness and success. Enable them to stay true to their dreams for your greater glory, to discern what is right, good and just, and to use their gifts wisely in the service to others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. graduate of, mention your school, of Central Scholar University. Hereby solemnly swear to fulfill my duties and obligations as member of the Central Scholar University Alumni Foundation Incorporated. To be loyal to my alma mater in words, thoughts, and deeds. I shall always bear in mind to uphold and defend the Constitution and bylaws of the Foundation and promote the University's maxim, Ciencia y Virtud, in my personal and professional life, maintain harmonious and mutually beneficial relationships 
among the members of the CEU Alumni Foundation Incorporated and members of its local and international chapters. Coordinate and cooperate with the Centro Scolar University Administration. I pledge and commit myself to bring honor and credit to our beloved alma mater. So help me God. Congratulations. Please be seated. On behalf of the graduating class, we would like to express our deepest appreciation to the following who have made this celebration possible. Reverend Father Brian Paul L. Tayag, SSP, for celebrating the Eucharist with us. Our university officials, headed by our President and Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Maria Cristina D. Padolina. Members of the Administrative Council, Dr. Olivia M. Nimuaco, Vice President and Dean of Studies of CEU Makati. Senior Justice Josue N. Bellocilio, Dean, School of Law and Jurisprudence. Other Deans and Academic Department Heads, Makati Coordinating Council, Faculty Members and Non-Teaching Staff. Dr. Paz I. Lucido, President, CEU Alumni Foundation, Incorporated. Professor Lester Frederic Delgado, our cantor and organist. Dear parents and those who have celebrated with us via online, may God bless you a hundredfold for all the support and encouragement you've given to us. Please all rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration of the Mass has been offered. Go and be a blessing to one another. Thanks be to God. Thanks.